How is it going, everyone? It seems like my days in 2024 are not complete if I don't upload some sort of video raging about Ubisoft. Now, Ubisoft, in all honesty, at this point, is probably one of the publishers that has disappointed me the most in... I want to say the last decade, last decade and a half, and that's for a wide variety of reasons. We'll talk about all of that uh, in a little bit. However... There's been a lot of discussion about The Crew, and The Crew being a game that people spent $60 for, and it being a game that, hey, some people spent even more than $60 on. You know what Ubisoft does, and they've been doing this going back to The Crew's initial release back in 2014. Has it gotten more egregious with the microtransactions? Has it gotten more egregious with the Deluxe Editions, Ultimate Editions, now roaring as high as $130? And even on top of that, you're gonna have microtransactions for single player games and so on and so forth yes you damn right it has however this has been happening for damn near a decade at this point with ubisoft and all of their nonsense and the crew is a game that people paid a premium price for it is a game that you would think should have an offline mode because it's a game that theoretically you should be able to play it offline you should still be able to explore the world offline that is not the case ubisoft decided not to patch in an offline mode even though in the files of the game, there are uh, some suggestions of a potential offline mode and so on and so forth. Look, that stuff is a little bit above my pay grade, so to speak. But from what I know, people dug through the files and it looks like an offline mode can certainly happen. And Ubisoft could certainly make it happen. And from what I've heard, people are trying to mod it in as well. It is a very, very questionable thing against people spending their money ownership of video games, which that has been under fire for a while, especially in regards to digital games. However... In the case of The Crew, if you have a physical copy of this game on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, uh, you've got a nice coaster, essentially. That's all you've got as far as utilizing the disc and the license on that disc. Uh, it's pretty much worthless at this point. I can pull out my copy of Massive Action Game from my drawer, and, uh, you know, that's about worth the same thing. And Massive Action Game was a true 256 online multiplayer first-person shooter, which I can kind of understand why that game is shut down, especially in a world where PlayStation PlayStation and Sony is too lazy to implement PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility. There's really no way to preserve a game like that unless Sony uh, would decide to implement backwards compatibility. Because I guarantee you, if that game had, if Sony had backwards compatibility to Mag, and I, I should say the PlayStation 3 in general, there would still be a squad of people on Mag. I'm confident in saying that. But that's rather here nor there. However, let's talk about Crew, because now, just a few weeks after the game got shut down, the Crew is reportedly being revoked from Ubisoft Connect accounts, as noted on the Accursed Farms Twitter account. I'm getting reports that people are having the crew revoked on people's accounts on Ubisoft Connect. I'm not sure that even matters since they made it inoperable, but anyway, but many in Europe seem to think this is illegal. Maybe doesn't change our plans either way. We can only help. I mean, at the end of the day... The game could be shut down, but to go above and beyond to be like, yeah, this game is not, uh, your own, you don't own this game anymore, it does not exist, that just seems like kicking us while we're down, and it's the fact that Ubisoft, of all publishers, would go above and beyond and do that, and now, you are getting into a murky legal territory when it comes to, uh, digital rights acts and things of that nature as far as this game, uh, you know, being owned, and... There is obviously a lot of murky and gray legal area as far as everything that's going on with the crew, given that it was a premium price game. Um, you know, it shutting down in the first place is a big deal, given that, again, you're losing access to a game that you paid money for. It being revoked, it doesn't sound that crazy, but now you're pushing the envelope one step further in terms of literally just taking away ownership of the game. If the game was still downloadable in a sense, maybe you can finagle your way into modding the game or something like that. I don't know. I don't know as far as what you could do. I actually have a copy of The Crew on Steam, and I am still able to install the game onto Steam. Obviously, I'm installing something that's absolutely worthless at this stage of the game, so it doesn't really... Uh, uh, matter, but 
Ubisoft taking the crew away from buyers now uh, deprives you of the game files as well, which you should have access to the game files. At least I would think. I don't know entirely how the legal system works for anything like this, but it sounds a little bit crazy to me that this is all going on. And it's insult to injury when it's coming from a publisher like Ubisoft. The crew has been the most notable instance of a game getting pulled. Look, we've seen, and I've mentioned it over and over again, games get pulled from Steam and digital storefronts all the time. Usually, it's because of licensing issues, and you want to know what uh, series of games and what genre of games have a lot of licensing issues? Racing games. Racing games because of the car models. Racing games because of the soundtracks they utilize. Generally speaking, racing games are some of the first games to go. Look at the Forza Horizon series. A lot of the older Forza Horizon games are not available on the Xbox Store, and, um, you know, in the future, it's very possible that a Forza Horizon 4 or Forza Horizon 5 could get pulled, let's say, a decade from now from the Steam store. I hope that's not the case and the Xbox store, of course. I hope that's not the case, but that's why Forza Horizon is one of those uh, franchises that I actually make sure to add to my library and own because uh, they can get pulled at some point. Um, but nevertheless, racing games have always been uh, some of the titles to get pulled. Obviously, when you have licensed IPs like a Transformers, a Deadpool, those games are also uh, possible to get pulled. And it's all determined on what t uh, sort of licensing deal you have. You can sign licensing deals for perpetuity to use that content in perpetuity. Perpetuity. However, the issue with that is, I would imagine, it's incredibly expensive to go down that route. Like, could you imagine how expensive that would be? That would be pretty damn expensive. But I digress. Uh, in the case of Ubisoft, they could have easily patched in an offline mode for the crew, taken the game offline. But no, they decided to shut down the game entirely. And now you just lose complete access to the game. And they're going one step further than that by revoking the files from you if this is true across the board. Again, as far as Steam is concerned, I'm still able to install this game onto Steam as I'm recording this video. But the fact that enough people have faced this issue is just wild. Wild to me, and let's just say this is a uh, oversight by Ubisoft or something like that. Ubisoft still at this point should be one of those publishers that people absolutely trash, and it's not like they're a publisher that doesn't have a bevy, a ridiculous, an absurd amount of top-level IPs under their uh, their umbrella. With Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, Beyond Good and Evil Two is in dev, uh, dev hell, but you know that's still a thing. Splinter Cell, so on into Prince of Persia, and I can go on and on. And I get that they're doing Rogue of Prince of Persia. And hopefully that's good, but you know, they've got so many top level IPs that you think that they would be able to create quality games, and I get it. Greed is possible. Greed is going to be something that everybody experiences in various ways. There's times on this YouTube channel, let's be real, I get a little bit greedy with the content I upload, but I feel like we all need to have managed greed. We all need to have some sort of managed level of greed, and I feel like Ubisoft has taken greed and they've gone to the end degree with it. They've gone so insane with their level of greed that it's just mind-boggling. I'm all for you trying to figure out how to make a little bit more money on your games. Games are expensive. You're a business that needs to be profitable. But when you're doing $130 deluxe editions that has story-based content in it and this gimmicky early access and the fact that the base $70 game doesn't have all the content and you're locking the game away, on top of that, you're revoking access to games that uh, people paid money for. On top of that, we didn't even talk about it that much, but Star Wars Outlaws is a game that requires internet connection to install what are we doing here and i get it like maybe this isn't a big deal but ubisoft just keeps taking an inch and people keep giving ubisoft an inch and thankfully with star wars outlaws and this crew nonsense it does seem like people are pushing back but that inch has already turned into multiple multiple and multiple miles and ubisoft is just like yeah this is the norm. this is the norm because guess what when avatar frontiers of pandora came out it was the same nonsense as star wars you know what the difference is nobody he cared about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Look at that game. It didn't employ the early access gimmick, but it had the $130 deluxe edition with a season pass that was valued at $40. What are we doing? 
It's just now you have Outlaws, which is a game that I think people had high hopes for and high expectations, and it's gonna be more in the mainstream zeitgeist than Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was. I didn't even hate Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, but the game was super mid, and I just don't think people care about Avatar like that. I don't know. Maybe people love Avatar, but I just don't think that's the case. Obviously, Last Airbender, I'm all about that, but Avatar, like the movie series, I just don't know if that's that big of an IP. But nonetheless, that's gonna do it for me. I know I've been rambling quite a bit, and I've been ensuing rage and vehement hatred towards Ubisoft, but I feel like it's warranted in this case. And I have a good relationship with Ubisoft. I've been a part of a lot of their playtests. I've been a part of a lot of content and uh, we have, I would say, a pretty good rapport. But if me making videos about truth uh, you know, erodes that rapport, if it completely destroys that rapport that I have with Ubisoft, I don't care, uh, because this stuff is nonsense, and I'm gonna continue calling out, uh, nonsense like this, but that'll do it for me, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, as always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one, peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.